I'm going to talk this morning about your kingdom come. Hopefully you remember that at the moment we're still talking about the kingdom. And until I think we can see that we're all like, I got it and I haven't got it yet, then uh, we've got to just keep, keep digging into it, keep delving into the Word of God till we reach a point that we understand what it is to be in the kingdom to be in the kingdom. Remember a few weeks ago, I talked to you about my young grandson who looked like he was coming to stay. And often I think we're still in that place that we come into his kingdom, but we choose to live in other things and we go back out and then we choose to go in certain places. Remember I talked about the photo and said, is everywhere you're going during the week, are you happy to put up a photo of Jesus and just go, you know, we're here in the kingdom with you. What happens to you on Saturday night? What happens to you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? And then we're back to Saturday because Sunday I know we're here and we're just doing good and we're just going to sing to God and just honour him. But I want to look at a scripture as we look at your kingdom come. And I'm sure it's a a scripture you all know. Uh, Maybe Jess, if you can bring that up. Uh, uh, Matthew 6 verse 9. Matthew 6 verse 9 and we'll we'll go through it. And we probably don't even need to bring it up on the screen because you should all know it. It starts with our Father. Do you know that one? Yes, some of you do, three of you do. Okay, put your hand up if you've ever prayed. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hopefully, every, basically every hand went up. It's a, it's a prayer that we know. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. And I don't know if you've ever stopped to think about, sometimes you just say prayers over and over again. Or, and it was a prayer that the Lord Jesus told us to pray. So what does it mean for your kingdom to come? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And some great songs like that. And it's a nice little quick, easy prayer to pray. It's a, a prayer that we teach kids. But is it a prayer we're really trying to make happen? Your kingdom come, your will be done. So just before I I delve into that a little bit, I want to sidetrack. And uh, one of the most common things I hear people whinge about is about God and the way he runs this planet. Okay, you know, like, well, you know, whether you're a non-believer, then their thing is like, well, if God is real, why are bad things happening to people? Have you heard that one? Yeah, you know, if God is real, why does why are things happening to uh, people? Why doesn't He do something? Uh, maybe you're here today and you're a Christian and you're thinking, you know, like, well, if God is real, why did He not? Why does He not stop all these things happening? Because it's just not the unbeliever. Have you ever wondered that yourself? One of you. Okay, the rest of you just have already got it covered, so you know why. Okay, so there's an answer why this isn't happening. And it's in Psalm 115, verse 16. Psalm 115, verse 16 is the answer to everything. Because it says this, the heavens are the Lord's. Okay, the heavens are the Lord's. But the earth he's given to who? To you. To us. So the reason God is not intervening is because he actually gave it to you to rule and reign. At this time, at this season in the, where we're at, earth belongs to you. And you are the people who rule and reign here. You are the people that have dominion here. You are the people that have authority here. So actually, next time someone says to you, well, if God is real, why is something bad happening? You can actually say, well, that's actually our fault. Well, probably more your fault than my fault, because I go to church and you don't, and you're probably not doing a, a good job. But The fact is, it's because we are the ones that have the authority here, not him. And when we understand that, it's going to help to put things into perspective because we want him to be this little fairy godmother that's going to come down and just wave a magic wand and make everything here on the earth better. See, but when you understand what it meant to pray that your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, you're actually praying that God will give you a job. Okay, and we're going to look into a little bit more about what that is. And I'm going to start in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 1. And I'm just going to pull out little bits of it, but we'll go from Genesis chapter 1 verse 11 in a minute. When you understand that the world, the earth, is your job. Okay, how you live, how you behave, what you do is what happens. Why, why is there not enough food in the world? Because your fridge is full of stuff that's gone mouldy that you haven't used. 
Okay, why are there poor people in the world? Because you're busy buying a nice car and a nice house and a nice this and a nice that because there's enough money in the world and there's enough food in the world and there's enough of everything in the world and then God said, I'm giving it to you and you rule and reign until I come again. So let's look at this. Okay, in Genesis chapter 1. Verse 11, it says this, Then God said, Let the earth bring forth grass and the herbs and, the, and, the, and yield its seed and the fruits of the trees and yield its fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself and is in the earth. And it was so. And then the earth brought forth grass and herbs and yielded seed according to its kind and the trees that yielded fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. Then God said, let there be light. And then God said, let the water abound with the abundance of the living creatures and let the birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmaments of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures and every living thing that moves to which the water abounded according to its kind and every winged bird according to its kind. And then God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply. Most of you are like already learnt this in Sunday school. Yeah, we know. He made the birds. He made the trees. He made, he made everything. Okay. And I know that we understand that. And, and he said, you know, be fruitful and multiply. And then God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to its kind, cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth, which are according to its kind. And so it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to its, its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Okay, so we, we, we're just looking at the moment when, when God was making um, the, the planet that we're on. Okay, so God decided I'm going to make a planet and I'm going to put all these animals on there and I'm going to put all these seeds and I'm going to put all these herbs and I'm going to do all these things. And there was a, something happening there. Now, hopefully you all know the story. What did he make after that? Man. Yeah, okay. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over the cattle and over, every, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And then God said to them, be blessed, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth, subdue it and have dominion over it. Blah, 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 blah. That's probably the most Bible a lot of you have read in a long time. It's probably something that you think that you know. But there's something there that happens so many times. So one, we need to understand this, that up in the heavens, there is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Trinity wake up one morning and go, hey, I've got a good idea. Let's make a new place. We'll call it Earth. And we'll put, we'll put things on there. We'll put birds and, and animals and, and all of these things. And I don't know if you noticed something that happened repetitively through that. He said that we'll, we'll put fish, okay, and the fish will be according to its kind. According to its kind. It said it again and again. According to its kind. According to its kind. So I'm going to put the, the, this fish on. I can't even think of a fish's name now. But, and it's going to be the same as according to the other kind of fish. And then I'm going to put um, herbs on the earth. And they're going to be according to the herbs. So they're going to be like the other herbs. And they're going to reproduce and they're going to multiply. Okay, he says that again and again. But then he decides to make man. And he says that I'm going to make man in whose likeness? In his likeness. So on the planet, what God did was he put people that were like him. I'm going to put people that are like him into, into the earth. So they said, we want to, it's almost like they want to con con colonize the earth. So we, we want to make a whole new place, okay? And we want some fish and some birds and some animals, and they will reproduce of their kind. But what I'll put on earth is I'll put the same spirit, I'll put the same things of me into the earth. It sounded like a great idea. Now, one of the things that you'll notice if you know your Bible was he made Adam first, okay? And then he puts Adam to sleep and he, he makes Eve out of Adam, which is still according to God's kind. Okay. Now, women, I just want to encourage you, okay? The greatest miracle that ever happened on this planet was done when man was asleep. <laughs> so, if you have a husband that goes home and nana naps, you need to not worry about it. You need to go, you know what? God makes the greatest things when men are asleep. 
Okay, so when you're laying next to him and he's snoring, you can be just praising your God. God, I thank you that you make the most amazing things when he's asleep. Because if you wake him up before the time, God might not have time to create something. That's just a side thought. Okay, but that's what he did. So he's making man in his likeness. Now, there are some people here today who've got babies and some people who are pregnant. And I'm assuming, who's pregnant? Kita. I'm assuming that what you're hoping to have come onto this earth is something that's just like you and Joey, okay? If it comes out looking like Lewis, okay, there's a, do you understand what I'm saying? So now, yesterday we were in Blake's bedroom and we were helping him tidy up so he can get a mark off his little chart and Kai saw a, a picture of Blake's ultrasound. It stuck to the back of his door. And straight away he started yelling, I know what it is, I know what it is. We've got to tell Kita she's having a boy. I know she is because I just looked at Blake's photo, his ultrasound, and it looks the same as what she showed on Sunday and I saw it. <laughs> now, admittedly, a few weeks ago he definitely knew what it was because when he saw that picture, he said, no, you can see her long blonde hair down the back in the photo. So... But our hope is when you have a baby, you want it to look like you. You want it to act like you. And every parent, when the child misbehaves, I've never heard a parent go, oh gosh, they're acting just like me. You automatically say, they're just like, just like your father. He yells just like his father. He cries just like his mother. But there's something in us. When you desire to have a baby, when you desire to multiply the earth, Josh, uh, Joey said that recently. He said, you know, we've been in here since we were kids and now it's our time to multiply the church. They're not going to bring forth a Lewis baby. Their hope is that he said, we're hoping to bring forth a little Joey and Keita because he wanted it to be reproduced according to his kind. So when Jesus, this is going somewhere. When Jesus created the planet, he did it for a reason. He was, his idea was, I'll have the animals that will multiply according to their kind and the herbs that will multiply according to their kind. But I'm going to put man on the earth and he's going to multiply according to our kind. So that the aim would be, that heaven would become like earth. He would make heaven come to earth. We're waiting for earth to go to heaven. We think that a whole understanding of our Christianity is, I asked Jesus Christ into my heart and then I'm going to heaven. But what it was, was when you asked Jesus Christ into your heart and you made him Lord of life, heaven was supposed to be coming to earth. That's you reproducing and multiplying according to his kind. There's something that we line up with that goes, right, now I'm, I'm in line with him. But what we need to understand is how Satan will come exactly to us as he did to Adam and Eve. So Satan comes to Eve and he starts to say to her, like, if you eat of this fruit, you will become just like God. What was Adam like? God. So Satan came and promised him something that he already had. And he does exactly the same to us. We look at that guy and so many people are like, when I get to heaven, I'm going to be talking to Adam. Like, why'd you listen to your wife anyway? And, but the whole fact was they were promised what they already had. Instead of saying, no, we, we already are like God. We're created in his image. We don't need to, to do anything. They were tricked. Now, see, Satan doesn't have dominion. We have dominion. What Satan has on this earth is influence. His job is to try and influence you to not realize what you've got, to not realize what the kingdom is about, to not realize your authority and the dominion that you can have. And as soon as that happens, we start to move. We start to move away from, you know, what, what happened was they understood at that point that, that God was just God and God walked with them. How cool is that? God walked with them in that place. They, they walked in the same, when you look at the word of, of what God was, when he made them in his image, okay, that means he made them, they had, they had glory, okay. Glory is not only weight, it's character. Okay? The word Shekinah talks about the weight of God, the Shekinah glory, the, the character. Okay, So what they had was the character of God, the character of God. Everything that God was was placed inside of them. 
But the day they decided, we don't really know if we want to listen to you. We don't know if we want to do, we want to do our own thing. And, and Pastor's been talking about that. We want to, we wanna, you know, wear our own apparel. We want to do our own things, but we want to call you God. That's what they did. That's what they did. And then all of a sudden, they noticed what? They were naked. Because what they lost was the, the glory. They lost the character of God. And all of a sudden, they realized that, that they're, they're naked and they, they hide from God. And God's going, you, you already have that in you. If you would just listen and understand what God has for you. To, to not be swayed by the evil one. See, the Bible says we're, the, world, the world is under the sway of the evil one. And what happens is, see, God places us in a really firm foundation. But the sway is like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. You know, we make promises to God. We do that. Well, I, I don't know. Is, is the kingdom of God really that good? Is it just that I could ask Jesus in my heart? Is it really about a whole change in my, my way of living and, and everything else? But it's so important for us to listen to what God is saying to us and to walk in his kingdom. To be listening when those, those words come into your head exactly the same. Did God really say did God really say? And that goes, that goes right across our lives. We want to listen. We want to have his kingdom come to earth. Yep. And then we take up the tithing and you're sitting there with that money in your pocket going, did God really say? I don't really know about that scripture in Malachi. I mean, like that's Old Testament and yeah, I, I don't know. Did God really say? When God wants us to, to serve, the Bible says, well done, good and faithful churchgoer. Well done, good and faithful servant. You mean I've got to do so? Did God really say that? I don't know if he actually meant servant. Maybe he just meant, yeah, maybe he meant something else. When God said so many things through the word of God, when God brings us together in a marriage and he puts you together and goes, do you want to make a, a commitment before me for better or worse in sickness or in health? Yeah, but he's bugging me now. And I don't really like him anymore. And, and he's hard to get on with. Did God really say? Did God really say? When I want to get my own way and I want to, I want to lie or I want to steal or I want to cheat or somebody really gets up my nose. Did God really say? And when the enemy gets in our, in our head, because we have dominion, we have authority and we have power, we choose then, am I going to live in the kingdom of God? Or am I going to live in the kingdom of the world? And then when I come over in the kingdom of the world, things start going wrong and I start to question God, you know, where is God? And God's going, well, what are you doing? Come and live in the kingdom. Your kingdom come. Oh, we like that idea. Yeah, God, your kingdom come. But it comes to your will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. The way his kingdom comes is that we start to walk in his will. Well, how do I want to know what God's will is. Read his word. If we walk in the Word, we'll walk in His will. If you want to walk in His will, you've got to walk in the Word. But often we don't want to walk in the Word. We don't want to walk in His will either. We want to walk in our own way, which is what Adam and Eve did. And we want to produce in His likeness. But I want a baby that looks just like me. I want a baby that talks like me. God's saying we need to be walking in the kingdom. Kingdom come to the earth to change heaven. See, when we're reading the Word of God, a lot of times, um, it's actually only the book of Matthew, he talks about the kingdom of heaven. But really, the kingdom of heaven is where Jesus is. The kingdom of God is where we are. Okay, so Matthew seems to interchange it a little, but he's the only person in the gospel that calls it the kingdom of heaven. But in a way, if you just imagine, kingdom of heaven is where God is. Kingdom of God is where we are. Because there's so much in the Word of God about the, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is where we allow God to rule and reign in our life. That's how his kingdom comes. See, for every person that's here that's got saved, that's walking in his way, his kingdom is coming. And that'll be what will change the earth. But so often we're waiting like, you know, is God going to rapture us? I think Pastor just mentioned that in communion. You know, like, will we go post-trib? Will we go pre-trib? You know, will we be, you know, you know but the, the Bible definitely says, you know, like, um, he will come and he will, he will lift out. Will he lift out the bad people or the good people? Go back and read some of those scriptures. I'm not going to preach either way what it is because you can back all three theories in, in the Word of God. So 
Maybe because when he talks about the, the tares and the wheat, he says, you know, and they're like, there is weeds growing on. He says, don't worry, at the end of the time, the Lord will come and he will take out the weeds and he'll burn them and he'll leave. So maybe his kingdom is coming here. Now, we don't really know for sure, but the main thing is that we live like kingdom people. We live in his way. We want to not be like that. We want to say, Lord, we, we don't want to wear our own apparel. We don't want to do our own thing. We want to do what your word says. Your kingdom come, Lord. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And, and ch- that's going to happen in me. The kingdom of God that comes, it'll come through a, a, a system and a, and a government and a power. That's actually w- what he's talking about there. That when we start to understand who he is, that God rules in, in heaven But when his likeness comes in us, there's an authority that comes in us to take back what God has got for us. When we start to to pray and ask God about putting him back in his place. I want to have a look at John 3, verse 3. John 3. See, there's something that's supposed to happen, a, a transition. A lot of times, you know, maybe you've asked Jesus into your heart. You were going through a really hard time. Somebody told you about Jesus. And like if you ask Jesus into your heart, you know, one, they might have told you things are going to get way better. Part of that is as you move into kingdom living, as you move into kingdom living. But this is what John 3, 3 says. Jesus answered and said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You cannot see the kingdom of God. See, until you become born again, you, it's, the Bible says your eyes aren't open. So what we do see in the kingdom of God, hopefully if you're a born again Christian, is you suddenly realize that there's two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of darkness is where anxiety is, fornication is, adultery is, um, anger, blasphemy, all of these things. And when you're in the world, I don't know about you, but like I thought I was a good person until I got saved. <laughs> I was certainly better than the rest of those people. And so when someone told me about Jesus, I was thinking, well, I don't really need to change. I mean, basically, I'm like saint material or almost. That was on my standard compared to them, let me say. And it wasn't a very high standard. The advantage is if you hang out with people that are always lower than you, you always feel better, which is a good way to go. So even though my life was totally wrong and all the things that I was in, but when someone told me about Jesus Christ and I prayed and I had my eyes open, all of a sudden... And I don't know if this happened to you. All of a sudden I realised there's another whole kingdom over there that I'm not living in. Oh, I was saying the prayers. My mum did that in, what you used to have? Hobby texts. We had that little prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. I knew it all. And God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change and the wisdom to know the difference. But the fact is because I wasn't saved, I didn't have the wisdom to know the difference. And so it wasn't until someone told me about Jesus Not just about God, but about Jesus who died on the cross, who is the King of kings and Lord of lords, and he's supposed to be ruling in my life. Even though I thought I was kind of believing, my eyes were open to go, wow, there's a kingdom of darkness and there's a kingdom of God, and I need need to make a transition. It's through the blood of Jesus that I, I make that transition. I come into the kingdom of light. I come out of the things of darkness. See, often what we want to do, we want to ask Jesus into our heart and we want to have things, but we're not prepared to come out of the darkness. We're not prepared to read the Word of God where there's some awesome lists that tell you what's in darkness. Oh, no, because Jesus loves you now. See, I've got Jesus in my heart. And we're still living like the world, wondering why. We're an atrocious witness. Oh, but I tell them when I'm at the nightclubs about Jesus. And when they pick me up because I'm so drunk, I couldn't get up in the morning, I always pray for them. I put them on my prayer list and everything. And, you know, when I, when I speak like I speak to my husband and everything, um, I usually say sorry before we go to church. God's going, no, there's a kingdom of darkness and a kingdom of light. And it says there that when you become born again, Misha's eyes are open to a whole new world because there was a time where all she saw was in the womb. But all of a sudden, she sees our wacky little faces now going, and there's a whole new world out there. Now, probably sometimes she thinks, I want to go back in. (laughs) They're scary out here. And sometimes I think we're the same because there's that fear if I swap over into the kingdom of, of God, what happens if it's not that good? 
Because the guys are always better looking in the kingdom of darkness. The girls are always better looking. There seems to be, that's what they think. The money's better over here. The life is better over here. But I do want to go to heaven, so I'll just pop here on a Sunday. And then I'm back into the kingdom of darkness. And God's saying that when you are born again, you open your eyes and you notice that there's a kingdom, a different kingdom. And it's not a kingdom to come. It's not the kingdom in heaven. It's the kingdom that's in us to be able to go, I want to go live in here. Now, I'm not saying that we never make a mistake. But what I was saying to you a few weeks ago was the same. Where do you, where do you want to live? Where do you want to live? You know, because we have a, a Bible that will guide us. And okay, some things we don't realize. And I understand we make mistakes and we, we get angry. We all do those things. But when I defiantly decide to live over here where I know it doesn't line up with what God's saying. See, God has a, a list of rules and he has the Holy Spirit now that comes and is inside of us to help us. He's the one that quickens to your heart. I'd have to question if you're even born again, if you can live in this world and not feel that it's okay, oh, everything's okay here. I'm okay here. I can't see what's wrong with this. Then my suggestion is get saved, okay? Because the Holy Spirit's going to tell you. But often we don't want the Holy Spirit to tell us. The Bible says we can sear our hearts. You know, just recently my daughter was telling me that she's made a, a, a rewards chart for the kids. And so what happens is it has a list of things and they've got to mark them off. So I was asking Kai about it. I always like to make sure they understand the principle. And they said, yeah, what happens is, um, like instead of mummy having to tell us all these things, it's on a list and we just tick the things off. And so um, mummy doesn't need to tell us. And then he paused for a minute. He said, so we probably don't need a mummy then. So no, you definitely still need a mummy. And sometimes we laugh at those things, but we're the same. We don't think we want the Holy Spirit because that's okay. We, we, we'll just tick off what we think and, and they've got like little attitudes. Sometimes you've got to think about when, if God had to put little attitude stickers on your thing, how did you do that? When I said to you, don't do this and you still did it, has God, have you got lots of little smiley faces or lots of bad faces? See, I love watching kids because kids are so much like us, we just don't admit it. Like we just criticise them but do the same thing. One of the things that Kai did, because he had a few little sad faces there from his mum, when she was out, he just went and changed them and put a smiley one. Oh, but we would never do that, would we, church? Okay, there's not things that God's unhappy with you for that you don't change it as soon as you think he's not looking. I'll just get on my, my reward chart going, I'll bring it to church. Here we go. And God's going, I can see where your finger rubbed that out. That's your fingerprint. I can see that you rubbed that out because I didn't have a smiley face there. It's the kingdom of God. Father, let your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. So the kingdom of God, he says, unless you're born again. It's got to get to a point where we start to realize what, what God's saying. The beginning of that, that prayer says, Our Father, who art on earth, Oh, good. Someone knows the prayer. Our Father who art on earth, our Father who art in heaven. God's just trying to get you to say, Jesus, when he said that, so I want you to understand, our Father who art in heaven, God is in heaven. When you understand that as you're praying that, God, you're up there. Okay. Our Father who art in heaven, you accept everything in your name. Holy, 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 holy is your name. Holy is your name. Hallowed is your name. Holy. You're a holy God who lives in heaven. Our Father who art in heaven. Holy is your name. His name is holy. We're created in his image, in his likeness, according to him. So what should we be trying to do? Be holy. Walk holy. Our Father who art in heaven, holy be, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Father, I want your kingdom to come. I want your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. That prayer is supposed to be something that's so deep in us to just bring us back in line. My Father who's in heaven, gosh, if you're in heaven, you see everything. You see my Mondays and my Sundays. Holy is your name. But Father, how awesome. I was created in your likeness. As I tap into that, your kingdom come. Your will be done. Not my will, Lord. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, often what we're, we're wanting to do is just see the kingdom come. 
we well we're just we're just praying for his kingdom to come. We're 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 you know interceding, praying. No, your kingdom comes within us. The word of God says this in Luke seventeen verse twenty. Luke seventeen verse twenty. It says, now when he had asked the Pharisees, sorry, now when, the, he, when he was asked by the Pharisees, when is the kingdom of God, when, when will it come? See, often we're, we're thinking that, well, I, I just, just before I know Jesus is returning, then I'll get my life right. Then I'll do the right thing. When, then I'll, I'll do these things. So they were kind of go, okay, so if there's a kingdom to come, you tell us when it is and then we'll all get right. And Jesus says this, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. The kingdom of God. Church, I think we need to hear that. It's not going to come by you just looking. It comes by you changing. It comes from you transforming. It comes from us going, okay, God, I need to get that right in my life, in my marriage, in my, in my children, in my family, in my everything. It's like your kingdom come because it's not going to come from observation. It's going to come from transformation. That's why the disciples were so disappointed because when Jesus came to the earth as king, they were convinced he's now the coming king. Hallelujah. And we're on the right track. And this is so exciting. And then the king dies on the cross. And so they're disappointed. We, we thought he was the new king. We thought we knew that there was a king coming. And Jesus is still saying, pray this, your, your kingdom come on earth. Why? You just left. How can you, you do that? Because there was something that was happening there. Something that was happening there. When Jesus comes into our heart, it changes. It should change the way you walk. It should change the way you talk. It should change the direction that you're going in your life to be able to go, God, I, I, I understand now I'm kingdom living. I'm walking in your, in your kingdom. Yeah, I'm going to make mistakes, but I soon want to get back onto. Wow, if I'm, if I'm responsible for bringing your kingdom to this earth, I want to I wanna get out there. Pastor Tom was talking about being ambassadors. We're ambassadors for him. We're, we're the people that he sent to change this earth and to, to cause change in the things of God. To know the kingdom of God and, and what's happening. Even when um, Jesus was asking them, um, in the, the book of John, Jesus is asking them, like they come to stone him. And he's like, why, why are you stoning me? Why, what, for what deed, he says, are you stoning me for? And they were like, we're not stoning you for the deeds. We're, we're going to stone you because you say you're a king. See, if there's a king coming, the whole government changes. And they knew that. So they didn't, Jesus was never in trouble for healing. Jesus was never in trouble for those things. Really what they didn't like was the fear that he was going to come and be a king. Because if there's a new king, there's a new kingdom. And if there's a new kingdom, then there's some things that have got to change. And this is what they realized. So they didn't, they didn't want that. So the disciples are disappointed because their king just got crucified. And the other people are fearful because if a, if a king comes, they know that they've got to change. If a king comes into our lives, things have got to change. God is calling us into, into his kingdom to understand, you know, what he's saying to understand the authority that we have. We have such amazing dominion already, but we don't, we don't use it. Instead of taking the authority that is in us to go like, you know, wow, I'm formed in his, his likeness. See, when the change comes within, see, because culture isn't in, when you, when you think about culture, culture's not in the, in the land that you live in. So when you go to um, Liberia, and we're like, okay, that's what they do in Liberia. That's how they dress. That's what they say. That's what they do. That's what they eat. If I live in India, that's what they say. That's what they eat. That's what they do. But I can go to little India in Melbourne. So it's not about land. I can go to, um, what's the other one called? Little China in, in, in Singapore or, or wherever. It's like you walk into what should be Singapore and it looks like Chinatown, Chinatown. It's like weird and it, it, it's, so it's not about the land that we live in. It's about the culture that's in us. I, I love it sometimes when you, you see someone. I think um, Pastor Tom might have had someone come to the men's breakfast. He looks like he's Jamaican but he speaks like he's English. So it's not about the colour of our skin. It's not about where we've come from. It's about the culture that's in us. 
And what we've got to do at the moment when we come into that transition, what we have in us is worldly culture. This is the way the world does it. And then God says, but I have a different culture. I have a different culture of what I want you to, to live in. This is why Jesus talked a lot about, he said, you know, you're not of the world. See, we're not of the world. That's hard for us to understand. How can we be not of the world if we're in the world? One, because the world and the earth are different things. Okay? So much. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. See, we're, we're, we're speaking into a system. We're speaking into the worldly system. It talks about if you love the things of the world, not the things of the earth. It's talking about the things of the world. So he's saying to us, you, you can take your kingdom culture and you can change things. As we start to be changed into what God is saying, which is a bit like the Indian that you meet who speaks amazing English and, and you're like, wow, I thought you looked Indian. That there should be a culture that comes out of born-again Christians that when people hear the way you talk, when people hear the things that you say, when people hear the things that you do, they go, wow, you must be from a different culture, a different country, even though you live in the world. How am I going to be in the world? And we make the mistake by saying, well, you know, that's why it's good to go to these places because I can, I can witness to people. Not unless you're going to be totally different from them. There's got to be a place where we can go into the world but not be of the world. But what happens is we want to be of the world and of the kingdom of God. And the Bible says that light, light and dark can't mix. You start mixing your drinks, you're going to have problems. And often as Christians, we're mixing up the kingdom of God and the kingdom of world and we're wondering why. Why am I having problems? And God's going, if you just walk in the things of God, if you not, not just pray, but start to say, start to live, say to your wife, that's what we're going to do. We're going to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven through me. Because it's going to be through me, God, that you're going to cause your kingdom to come. That people are going to start to see that I'm different. People are going to see that I, I, I talk differently. I act differently. I dress differently. Because I'm, I want to be formed in his likeness. According to his likeness. Have you ever wondered, you know, we, we've got kids now with the internet being so easy access, trying to track down real parents. And I don't know if I, anyway, that's another story, but they track down real parents because you want to find where you're really from. Why as we as Christians are we not searching so hard? I want to know what my real father was like. I want to know what my real father looked like. I want to know, do I have his, his voice? Do I have his eyes? Do I see like he sees? I want to have my, my father's eyes. Amy Grant sings amazing, you know, my father's eyes. I want to see like he sees. I, I want to look like him. I want to, I want to track down that father. Because the father often we're tracking down is just the temporal intermediate bit to get here. Have the same desire to go, okay, what did my father look like? What did he form me for? What was his original plan to put Adam on earth? See, because to have dominion, you have to actually be born here. Okay, to have dominion, you have to be born here. Same as when we have visas and all those sort of things. So when, when Jesus wanted to come to the earth, he had to be born to be able to have dominion, to take some territory. But that was already given to us. So God came and he gave us that territory. And through our own silly ways, we, we lost it. So then he sent Jesus to the earth to be born on the earth to show you there is a kingdom. There is a king and you can still have authority and you can still have dominion, what you've got to do is walk in the king's ways and hear what the king is, is telling us. In those things, that we're going to start to see a, a real shift in, in what's happening. The, the Bible tells us in the, in the book of Matthew, it tells us is that the, the meek shall inherit heaven, the earth. So the, it's the meek, the, the, so much about the Word of God is actually talking about us ruling and reigning here. The sad thing is we're so busy hoping that when we die, we're going to heaven instead of worrying about, because if that was the case, Jesus would just get you to say a prayer, you'd come up the front and boom, off you'd go, up into heaven 
where there's no more pain and no more tears and no more crying and that would be awesome. But I don't know about you, you came on a, on a prayer line here, you asked Jesus into your heart, you did all that crying and repenting and everything else and he left you here. He left you here because he goes, great, another ambassador on my planet. He got, in his mind, he's like, wow, my kingdom will come even faster now. My kingdom will come. My kingdom will come. Every time a, a, a person gets saved, every time a person crosses from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, he's like, now my kingdom's going to come. But what's happening in church, which is so sad, we look more like the world. We look more like the world and we're hoping then, I don't even get why we would, but anyway, it's another point. Like, unless we're different, why are we, why are we wanting to be? Yeah, but if you want people to come to you, you've got you to be like the world. Well, no, that's not what the Word of God said. The Bible told us this, that we will reproduce according to our kind. According to our kind. God was saying, I want you to go into the world and multiply my, my way of living, my way of doing things, my, the things that I think. Remember I talked a few weeks ago about he's wanting us to make kingdom connections. That's not what the world does. For starters, in the world now, hardly anyone talks face to face. It's just text to text. Married people in bed texting each other, next to each other. It's just nuts, eh? Kids that don't know how to communicate, it's hard to find young people now that can actually have a conversation with us because we're so used to living in a, in a world of text instead of communicating. We've got marriages that are struggling because people don't know how to actually talk to each other because we formed our whole relationship just on the internet anyway and now I want to try and talk. But now I don't actually like you because when you're here, you, you bug me in the things that you... It's, it's, it's out about the connection that when I can go, I could get on with Ollie because he's a Christian and I'm a Christian and we're, we're both in the kingdom in the kingdom of God now. It's not that we're both going to heaven. Well, hopefully we're both going to heaven. But my connection is to be able to go, wow, we're, we're from the same nationality. See, we see it in the world, any, anywhere we are, and unfortunately even in church. If you're suddenly from the same country, everyone will go straight over to you. But if you're not, we're like, Ugh. and everybody's, everybody's too scared. But God's going, the connection has got to be so much greater than that to come into his connection. Let me go back to the meek. The meek will inherit the earth. Do you know that that word meek is actually a Greek word? It's something like paras. And it actually means, it doesn't mean shy and um, a pushover and easygoing. Or, it means to have self-control. Self-control. It's a huge difference. It means controlled and self-disciplined, brought under control. See, if you can bring your flesh under control, the meek shall inherit the earth. If I want to inherit the earth and I'm praying, your will be done, Lord, then Father, out of my self-discipline, out of my spirit submitting under what you want, then I'm going to inherit the earth. See, we want to inherit the earth, but we don't want to submit under anything. We, we've got a huge... And when I say generation, I'm not talking 20s. Most of you, yeah, that's right. I'd say probably under about 50 now is probably where it starts. We don't want to submit. We don't want to be told. We don't want to have anyone in authority. We're raising families now where we're going to ask our children, would you like to go to bed? Would you like to do this? And if you don't feel like it, you don't have to. Would you like to come into work today, Nathan? Would you like to? Um, it's, it's just nuts because we don't want to be told by anyone how to live. We're in a, in a freedom world where we go like, you can't tell me what to do. And God goes, no, and I won't do. But when we reach a point to go, it's only going to be the meek that will inherit the earth. I want to inherit the earth. So I'm going to have to be self-disciplined. I'm going to have to be, come under the control of the king to let his kingdom come and his will be done. To ask him to, you know, Lord, I want you to, to direct me. To understand that God, what he wants to do is is reproduce. I want you to think about anyone here who's ever had a baby and your desire to reproduce a child in your likeness is the same love of your father who goes, all I want to do is just birth more of me's on the earth. People who are, who are, uh, who are holy, people who are set apart, people who don't want to get swayed under the, the work of the enemy. That's what we're here for, church, to multiply in his image to multiply according to, to what he says and to, to hear his voice. What we want to do, I hope your prayer, I hope next time you pray that prayer and I'm just going to pray it with you. Our Father 
who art in heaven. Father, we acknowledge today that you are in heaven. Father God, hallowed be your name. Holy is your name. Father, and your desire is that we would be in your likeness. Right from the word go, Father, that you already made us like that. But Father, we were deceived by the enemy. Deceived by the sway of the enemy. Father God, your kingdom come. The kingdom of God here on earth, Father God. And your will be done. On earth, Father, we call heaven to earth through our lives, Father God. Lord, we acknowledge that's hard, Father God, but we thank you, Lord, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We thank you, Lord, that you are ruling and reigning in our life. Father God, we ask, Father God, to you to forgive us as we've placed ourselves to rule and reign on this earth. Father God, we want, Father, to walk in your dominion. I thank you, Father God, for the authority that you've given us, Father God, in all things. Father, over sickness. Father God, over depression, over fear. Father God, over failure, over negativity, over insecurity, Father God. Lord, Father God, your name is above all things. Father God, we are above all things. Father God, we are above and not beneath. Father God, we are the head and not the tail. Father God, as we walk in your kingdom, Father God, that Lord, we can overcome all things. Father God, we can have victory in all things, Father God. Lord, Father God, we would live victorious lives, Father God, as we seek first the kingdom of God. Father, the kingdom of God. Father, let the kingdom of God come within us. The kingdom of God.